Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I will be talking about my ranking of the Star Wars The High Republic novels that have come out thus far. Before I uh, show you my ranking, I want to go through a little bit of uh, uh, background on why I chose these books and what didn't make the cut, what did make the cut, things like that, and also understanding how my ranking will work. I am not going to include any of the High Republic comics, whether they're the adult ones from Marvel or the young, uh, young reader ones from uh, IDW. This is because I have not read the comics, and also because this is really a prose discussion. I'm talking about the novels that have been released so far, so the uh, comics will not be included. Because of the prose rule, I will not be including the, uh, the manga that came out, uh, Edge of Balance, because that is also not in the traditional prose sense, and it's also a really short story compared to these, and so I don't think it's quite fair to include, and so uh, I won't be including that as well. The final thing I won't be including is the audio drama Tempest Runner, because for one, I haven't listened to it, and for two, the print version has not released, and I always read everything in print. Um, I will say that I intend to read that book very soon, and you can expect that review next week. However, because um, the print version is coming out. However, it will not be uh, a part of this cut uh, for now. So I'm talking about the novels that have come out, which means that there were three waves of the first phase. The first phase was called Light of the Jedi, I believe. And there were three waves featuring three books. You have adult books, young adult books, and middle grade books. And so there will be three adult, three middle grade, three young adult. And um, uh, to give you a background understanding, uh, I have essentially three tiers, and I did not plan it this way when I was reading them. I was reading all of them hoping I would love them all equally. That obviously did not happen, and so I have three books that are in my bottom tier that I think are not that good. They're books that I just didn't enjoy, and this whole ranking video is my opinion. It's not saying, if you like these books, you're terrible because you have bad taste. No, these are books that just didn't work for me. I didn't like them at all, uh, but doesn't mean that, they're, that you won't like them, and so that's my bottom tier. It'll be my bottom three books. Then my middle three books will be books that I enjoyed. I think they're good books, but... I have issues with them, and they're, they didn't make the top cut. They're not amazing. I still would probably reread these books, possibly. Um, in fact, some of them I actually really do want to reread. And then you have my top three, and these are just mwah, chef's kiss. Love these books. I think they're fantastic. I absolutely was captivated by these books. I think about them, and they are in their respective... Uh, reading placement, they are perhaps some of the best of their type of books. And I'll get into that when I get to those. So that is my background uh, for, for all of these. So why don't I begin with my first book? The first book, which is my number nine in my ranking system, is the young adult novel Midnight Horizon by Daniel Jose Older. This is the final young adult book from the, the, the last, most recent uh, wave to come out. And uh, I put a review out a couple of weeks ago featuring this book. And so you probably have seen that I didn't like this book. I, I really didn't care for it. I thought that it had a potentially good setup at the beginning, but I feel that uh, he kind of ran it off the road. The problem I have with The High Republic is there are certain things that she should have done. The adult novels should have focused on the adult Jedi, like Avar Chris, and, uh, you know, all that, that whole group. And then the young adult should have focused on Wreath Silas, and the middle grade should have focused on uh, Vernestra Rowe. That is what they should have done. It would have made the books clearer, the lines clearer. It would have made them more enjoyable because each book would feel like a natural sequel to the last book because you're using the same characters. But because of two things. One, there was a decision to bring characters from each of the mediums to try to get people to read all of the different uh, lines of publishing, whether it was comics or, or novels or, or manga they, they kind of switched up the characters, so they're jumping around. So it makes it harder to, to find them. For a second thing, authors naturally like to use the characters that they like to use. And this book is a big example of this, where 
there are certain characters who were pop really big in the uh, the comics, uh, particularly the IDW comics that Daniel Jose Older wrote, and that they make an appearance here, and really they shouldn't have been present. Obviously, Ram Jamaram is a fun character, and he is just really entertaining. And he didn't fit against Wreath Silas in this book, I thought. I thought that Wreath should have had the solo. He's He's been building up to becoming a Jedi Knight. Wreath should have been the main character in this book. But instead, he has to kind of uh, good cop, bad cop with uh, Ram, who brings down the maturity level of the book quite a bit. And so that was very frustrating. At the same time, there are too many adult Jedi and other plot lines happening that keep the book unfocused. When the adult novels have a bajillion plot lines going on, it works because they're interweaving the proper way, and it also works because it's an adult novel, it's more complex. As a young adult, this should have been more focused. This should have been Wreath's book and Master Comic's book, and you should have just the two of them as the perspectives. But instead, it's bloated, it feels too big, and it feels like too much is happening, and I just did not have a fun time. I, I love reading Star Wars books. I would say that I've read somewhere around 200 Star Wars books, adult, young adult, and middle grade, and I've enjoyed reading almost 90% of them. This is one I can say I did not have a good time reading it. I felt like it was a chore. I felt like I had to read it because I had to read it. So that's why this is number nine on my list. And my number eight book has very similar issues, but for different reasons, and that is Out of the Shadows by Justina Ireland. Now, this was a book where I had read the, her book, A Test of Courage, and I was curious to see what would happen with the characters of Renestra Rowe, uh, Imri Kantaros, and Avon Staros. And so we saw the cover of this book, and I was like, ooh, that's where they're going? They're telling that kind of story. And no, that's not. It's a different, uh, it, it's a different character. And so it the, felt like the story took a hard left turn. Even though some of the characters like Vernestra and Emery are present, it felt like the story went in a completely different type of direction. Mostly because this is a young adult book as opposed to a um, middle grade book. And I thought that the direction in this book was very poorly designed but was better designed than Midnight Horizon. This book had more of a focus, but it should not have been on Vernestra. Again, this should have been Reith's book, who does make appearances, he is in the book, but it should have been his focus book, and instead it's not. At the same time, you have some characters that pop in that I don't think should have popped in in this book. I think that they should have been saved for other projects. And there is a resolution towards the end of this book to a plotline that is really big in the adult novels, and they absolutely should have made that a resolution in the adult novels. They should not have re re resolved that in this book. It felt very out of place, and I was like, oh, that's a big thing. We're, uh, we're doing that here? So that was a, uh, an issue I had as well. But I will say, I do think that this book has some great scenes and some great dialogue in it, but it doesn't handle some characters, particularly the male characters. That is Justina Ireland's biggest um, uh, issue is her, her writing of male characters. But there is a book later where she does much better. So there is still hope. So that's why this book is my number eight. Rounding out my number seven, which is the bottom tier of books I just overall didn't enjoy quite as much, is Race to Crash Point Tower by uh, Daniel Jose Older. Of the middle grade books, this is the most forgettable. And that's the problem. There is not much bad happening in this book. It's a quite enjoyable tale as you're reading it. But I completely forgot about the plot a few days after I had written my review. And I went back uh, in preparation to read my review, and I was like, oh, that happened? Oh, interesting. It didn't, it didn't have this, this deep impact on me the way I thought it would. And I was really disappointing because I, at the time, had a blast reading some of this book. Part of the issue is this is just too short. It's under 200 pages. But the other issue is that Daniel Jose Older tries to grasp at certain themes and just 
doesn't get there. He just he just falls short because of that. And also, again, this is a book that if you haven't read the um, uh, the IDW comics, you won't appreciate it as much. I haven't read the IDW comics, but I did read on things like Wikipedia. Uh, basically like a what you need to know going into this book. And so I understood who the characters were and where their journey had taken them. But because I hadn't read those comics, I felt lost otherwise. And so that's also an issue that the book suffers from. So that's why this is the number seven. I will say this is definitely more fun than the young adult books were in, of this bottom group because these books felt like a chore to read. This, this felt much more like enjoyable. But that's my bottom tier, so we're, the, the, the serious negativity is out of the way. We're now into the books that I enjoyed as a whole, and I think we're pretty good. These aren't amazing books, but they're pretty good. So let's go into my number six. My number six is Into the Dark, the last young adult book I'll be talking about on this list. This is a book by um, uh, Claudia Gray. This is a book that when it came out, I was so pumped for it, and I had such a fun time uh, reading this book. However, as time has gone on, I've actually given this book a lower rating in, in retrospect, because I think that it actually has some problems. Uh, one of the problems with this book is that uh, Claudia Gray hints at a romance subplot in this book, and she kind of takes the characters a, a little bit of the way. But whereas she went too far in her romance subplot in Lost Stars, she did too little in this book, and it feels a little underdeveloped. However, the side characters in this book, like Leox Jayasi, who is basically Space Matthew McConaughey, he's just hilarious. I love reading about him. And then you also have Geode, who I actually find his scenes quite funny. Uh, I, I enjoy that little gag uh, that they threw in. Uh, and then there are other characters that work really well in this book. And I think that Reese Silas works in the young adult medium really well. Um, uh, and so this is a book that... Uh, I, I enjoyed, but I, I did have some, some some problems with it. But overall, I think it's a it's a good book. Uh, so that's my number six. My number five is a book that actually has moved up more that now that I've thought about it than it was when I started, and that is a test of courage. When I first read this book, I was frustrated with a lot of things. But later on, they get fixed in other properties and actually make me appreciate this book more. So while Into the Dark, I thought, got, uh, got worse the more I thought about it, A Test of Courage got better the more I thought about it. And so I was very happy to read this book. I, I, I just, I loved so much about this book. Uh, what this book does right is it gives stakes to the middle grade genre. Middle grade oftentimes is, is kind of in a difficult place because they want to tell a Star Wars story, but Star Wars stories include death, and that is a very difficult thing to tell in a book for children. And this book is the first middle grade book that I've read that really dives deeply into death. Even the books that I really enjoyed from the EU, like the, the Jedi, uh, Jedi, uh, Young Jedi Knight books by Kevin J. Anderson, they kind of deal with death a little bit, but they even try to shy away from it. Characters are constantly surviving at the end of the book, making making it out alive. And so uh, this book, at the beginning of it, several important people die. And all of a sudden, Vernestra Rowe is stranded on a planet with a bunch of kids that she has to deal with. And uh, it just makes some great setup and just makes a great fun kids book to read that even adults can enjoy. The problems in this book come in the writing style. Again, I mentioned her weakness, Jocena Ireland's weakness, is her handling of male characters, but that does get better in another book I'll talk about in a minute. So it does, there is hope. But I enjoyed this book, and the more I think about it, the more I reminisce about it, and it works as a part one to Mission to Disaster, which is another middle grade, which is essentially like a part two. So I this is my number five. Highly enjoyed it. My number four is actually the first adult novel that I'll be talking about, and that is The Fallen Star by Claudia Gray. This book 
while being the weakest of the adult novels, is still such a good book. I enjoy the way that the adult novels are made, the way that they, the way that the authors in the adult books generally write characterization. I think is better than middle grade or young adult. I think that the way they're published, the way that they have, I think they have better artwork as a whole. I think that the adult novels uh, have better, like they have about the authors pages that are better, that are longer. They have a list of the author's other works, even if that work was not through the publisher Del Rey or through Lucasfilm. Uh, they even they include it because that's what you do. And so it's the, the experience of reading an adult novel is already enhanced. Um, but this is still a fun book to read. This is the climactic end to this wave of the High Republic. This is the big finale. You're seeing the the destruction of the Starlight Beacon, and yet it's still such a such a such a deep sad book. But it also has some hilarious fun moments. I think that this book is brought down by its usage of Leox Jayasi and Geode, who I said were a positive in Into the Dark. I think they're a negative in this book because they feel unnecessary. This feels like the problem of, I'm going to include the characters from my other works because they're my characters and I want to use them in the book. And so they're elevated and given major character status in this book when they really shouldn't have. The sh focus of this book should have been more on the Jedi. And the Jedi certainly have a good focus, which is why it's a great book. But they have the issue of having too many other characters involved. So that's where this book is. So this is my number four. So I've talked about my lower and my middle tier books where it's my, my not good and my good. Now we're getting into utterly fantastic, brilliant, love these books. These are all wonderful books that I'm going to talk about next. And so the first one, my number three on my ranking is Mission to Disaster by Justina Ireland. I loved this book. I was so apprehensive going in because I was so, I was, I felt betrayed by Out of the Shadows and how much I didn't like it. And I thought, can she deliver a good book? And she does. This is a brilliant, brilliant book that Justina Ireland wrote. This is the exact follow-up to uh, A Test of Courage that I wanted the Star Wars books to take. They should have just taken the middle grade line given it to Justina Ireland, and let her write a bunch of adventures featuring uh, Vernestra and Imri Kentaros. They didn't do that, but that's what they should have, because this book is golden. And this book tells the story that I wanted it to tell. This book tells where Avon Staros, at the beginning of the book, first chapter, is captured. And they go on a mission to try to figure out where she is. And it becomes a mystery. And it's a middle grade mystery, so it's it's a short book. It, it's a long book for a middle grade, but it's a, it's a short book overall. But the mystery in this book is brilliant, and I literally was like, "Oh my goodness, this that's that's genius!" When I read this, you could see my uh, my full review on the on the channel here. Uh, but I, I thought it was a brilliant book, and so I highly loved reading it. And I mentioned earlier in this video how. Justina Ireland's uh, issue is that she's not good at writing male characters. Well, she writes male characters really well in this book, and that was a very pleasant surprise for me. So she is growing on me, which is good. And it works, as I said, as a good linear follow-up to A Test of Courage. And if they can turn out, they probably won't because of the way the higher public structured, but if they could turn out more books like this, I would be so much more uh, invested. So I thought this was a great book. My number two and my number one are so good and so close together in the way they were written, in the way that they were edited, in the way that I feel about them, that I really have a hard time putting one over the other. And depending on the day, I feel like I waffle between this is my number one and this is my number one. So at any given time, I reserve the right to say, eh, I'm going to change it. But for right now, this is how I'm feeling at the moment. My number two is The Rising Storm by Kevin Scott. This is the big event book of the second of the middle part of this phase where you have the, the, the Republic Fair is happening and you see um, all the Jedi having to do different tasks, some on the administrative side, some on the security side, some on the pilot side, some on the, the helping out the pedestrian side. You have to see them in different roles and then you see the Nile attack and oh my goodness, 
it, the, the chaos of the Nile attack is brilliant. The politics in this book are brilliant. The villain, the, the senator villain in this book was really well handled. I, I, I enjoyed seeing him. At first, I was like, oh, he's going to be one-dimensional. And no, he's not one-dimensional. He's actually really well written. And then, of course, uh, hashtag Cav knows what he did. The ending of this book is brilliant. Is is just so, so smart. So, oh. It, it packs a punch, the ending of this book. And um, so I think this is the best climax or ending of any of the High Republic novels thus far. I think it was just done so well. And I, if, if James Lucino used to be the king of making references and tie-ins between the books and comics and, and TV shows and whatnot, he was the literary uh, king for that. Th- Kevin Scott's the new king for tie-ins because his books have so many tie-ins, and I just love his enthusiasm. He's a great plotter. He is a fantastic plotter for Star Wars, and I highly enjoyed this book as a whole. But my number one is Light of the Jedi, and this was the first book released in the High Republic, the big event book that started it all, and it is just a pleasant read as a whole. What makes this book just so special is the way that you have all those many plot lines happening, and they're all just so fun to read. They're all so complex, and yet the way they tie together is brilliant. The plot of this book as a whole is the best single plot in The Higher Public, but the climax is better for The Rising Storm. But they're so similar in so many ways that it really makes it hard to, to determine which one I like more. But the way that Cam, or the, not Cap Scott, the way that Charles Soule writes The Force in its kind of musical qualities, the way that Avar Chris sees it, is just so much fun to read. The chaos of the great disaster is great to read. The politics is so well done in this book. So I just love everything about it. I have one tiny, tiny, tiny issue with it. But other than that, I think this book is flawless. I love it. And so that is my ranking of the Higher Public novels. Some I didn't like, some I liked, and some I loved so much. So if you've read these books, let me know your ranking, uh, if you have one, whether you've read all the books or only a few of them. I would love to know your thoughts, if there's books that you loved that I didn't or books that you hated that I loved. I'd love to read your comments and discuss, and I love all that stuff. So please leave comments down below. Please like this channel and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.